What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Book of John online commentary, chapter one. Uh, this is a great chapter uh, within this book. It's rich. We could spend a lot of time in this, and I, uh, I want to keep this video relatively short, but I'm telling you, there's so much to cover. We need to cover some key things before we really jump in to breaking down this chapter that will help us better understand this chapter, but will also help us to better understand how we read the Bible um, just in general as we have some understanding. And so a couple of things we want to cover uh, here really quick. And the first is the idea of the Trinity. And what is the Trinity? You might be wondering that. Or you've maybe heard of the Godhead or the Godhead three in one. What does that mean? The Trinity is really referring to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now, this are three different persons, but what? Is, how is it that God is one God, and yet He's made of these three different persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? How is that the case? And there's a lot of analogies out there that really fall short to explain it. And it's one of those things, it's the most beautiful piece. As you read Scripture, it begins to just, you get it, but you can't necessarily... Uh, explain it in human terms. It's hard for us to comprehend how God could be three in one because Christianity is not a polytheistic faith. The scripture confirms that, that Christianity is a monotheistic faith, meaning that there is belief in only one God, that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are exactly who God is. And so that's a theme we will continue to break down as we go through this passage. The second thing is this, is we need to understand what is the law. Anytime we see the law referenced in the New Testament, what is it talking about? Well, in the Old Testament, the Bible has got the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, before Jesus was on the scene, God gave his chosen people, the Israelite people, the Jewish people who he was interacting with in a very special way. He gave them this law. He gave them this truth, these rules and commands that they were to follow. We find these laws in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and reiterated in the book of Deuteronomy. And some of these laws are crazy, and, and in today's perspective, it's hard to understand exactly even what they mean or, or what they, uh, why God would give his people this law. But the reason that he did it was to show this truth that on our own, humankind, humanity cannot achieve holiness, that by nature we are sinful people who fall short of the standard that God places for us, for, forth for us. And so we see a theme of grace and truth develop in John, where the law was truth, the law was truth, showing people their sinful nature. Jesus was both grace and truth, telling people that they are sinful and they needed to repent, but offering forgiveness for their sins, thus making them holy before God, a child of God because of his sacrifice on the cross. And therefore, in the New Testament, we see, and in the book of John specifically, this theme of grace and truth um, occurring and not just the law, that there's a new covenant that God is making with all of humankind uh, in the book of John. And so as we start to look at uh, chapter 1, in the very beginning, it can maybe be a little bit confusing because it says in, in verse one, in the beginning the word in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. What is the word? Like the word was with God and the word was God. In this chapter, the word is referring to Jesus himself. Remember, we have God the Father, Christ the Son, the Word, and then we have the Holy Spirit. And so the word is talking about Jesus. And it says that Jesus, right, the Word became flesh. Jesus took on humanity. He came to this earth to walk an earthly, uh, a human life in order to be a sacrifice for our sins. That the Word became flesh. Or the light, uh, it's described as the light came into the world. Jesus is the Word. He is the light that came into the world. And so we see a key character developing here also in the first chapter. We not only see Jesus developing, but we see this guy named John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is not John the author, John the follower of Christ, that we, or the disciple of Christ who is in Christ's inner circle. Uh, this is John the Baptist is a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy 
of Old Testament um, people who were appointed by God um, selling that, hey, there's going to be a voice in the wilderness that's coming that's going to preach a message of repentance before Jesus comes. This is who John the Baptist was. And you got to think, to be a Jewish person at this time, they were looking for the Old Testament. All the prophets in the Old Testament are pointing towards this Savior, towards this Messiah, who we know is Jesus, but they're wondering, who is it going to be? So they asked John the Baptist, hey, is this you? And he's like, no, I'm not the Christ. They asked him, hey, are you Elijah or the prophet? And he's referring to a couple of uh, moments in the Old Testament, or the people are referencing a couple of predictions in the Old Testament. And John the Baptist is like, hey, I'm the one who comes before Jesus. I'm not even worthy to untie the straps on his sandals. Jesus is coming. And while John is saying, with my message of repentance and turning from sins, I baptize with water, Christ is coming and that he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And there we see that third part of the Trinity start to come through in this first chapter, that the Holy Spirit, when we accept Jesus and we enter into a relationship with him, the Holy Spirit resides in our heart, acting as a guide and a counselor for our lives. And so that's what John is saying. John the Baptist is saying here is that, listen, Jesus came and he's going to baptize with the Holy Spirit, not just with water. I'm, I'm not the main guy. This is the one who you've been looking for, the Messiah. And to close out chapter one, we start to see Jesus has a plan for his ministry. He starts calling his disciples, his followers, those guys that are going to be young men that are going to be following with him and doing so much life with him, seeing what he is all about. He starts to call them. And at the end of this chapter, he says to them, follow me. He challenges them, follow me. And that's the same challenge that still resides with us today. And that Jesus is saying, follow me. So enjoy chapter one of the book of John.